Good morning, everyone. So today we are starting with data center architecture. So in the data center architecture, we will be starting with that how resources are aligned in a data center in the back end. So if you will talk about any data center in this world, so data center is having five basic components. Data centers are having five basic components. So the first we are having is compute. Second, we are having storage. Third, we are having networking. Fourth, we are having database. And fifth is security. So these are the five basic components of a data center. And without these five components, no data center can work, right? If you will see. No data center will work without these five basic components, right? So we are starting with that every hardware which we are having in a data center, that hardware will be having a hypervisor running on top of it, right? So every hardware in a data center will be running a hypervisor on top of it. And with the help of the hypervisor, we are running multiple virtual machines on top of it, right? So these virtual machines, these virtual machines will be using which particular storage? So you can see that with this particular hardware, there is a storage which is attached and that storage is known as DAS. DAS is known as directly attached storage. Storage which is directly attached with the hardware is known as DAS, right? Now. We will not be using DAS in a data center because DAS is not a scalable storage. So DAS is not a scalable storage. In place of DAS, we will be using SAN. Now, SAN is known as storage area network. So that is a complete area which is reserved for this particular storage only. So in SAN storage, we can have different, different type of storage devices. We can have SSDs, solid state drive, we can have HDD, hard disk drive. We can also have magnetic drive. So SSD, solid state drive is the costliest and the fastest drive which is available these days. If I will talk about HDD, hard disk drive, it is a cheaper drive in comparison to SSD and slower also. Magnetic, this technology is almost obsolete, right? But Amazon is still offering you this just for testing workloads, right? So how you will connect to the SAN storage? So in the hardware, we are going to have an adapter, which is going to be an HB adapter. From the HB adapter, a fiber channel wire will go to the fiber channel switch, and then you're going to get the storage in the back end, right? So SAN is a very, very costly storage because there is a whole area which is reserved for the storage only, and different, different type of storage devices are there in the back end, right? Next storage, which we are having is that is known as NAS. NAS is known as network attached storage. So you need to understand that once your virtual machines will start using storage, they will be using SAN because SAN is a very, very costly storage. And at the same time, it is a very fast storage. Right. But after some time, what will happen is after some time, your data will become infrequently accessed. Once your data will become infrequently accessed, you will not spend, you will not prefer spending so much of amount in storing the data into SAN. So you can set up a transition and you can send this data to NAS. So why NAS is cheaper? Because in NAS, we are having cheaper drives in the back end. At the same time, no fiber channel is there for connection, right? Now SAN and NAS, both are SAN and NAS, both are block storages. Now, what is a block storage? In block storage, data will be stored block by block. Every block is going to have a fixed size. Block storage is always for storing structured data. So all your virtual machines, your databases, your servers, your OLTPs, online transaction processing applications, they will always be using SAN storage. They will always be using block storage. So block storage is always for using structured, storing structured data. Now, there is another storage that is known as object storage. Now, what object storage is, object storage is a global storage. Object storage is not attached to a data center, right? 
So object storage is a storage which where every object will have a HTTPS link. Every object will be assigned a HTTPS link, right? And the HTTPS link which will be assigned, like I will take a take an example. If you will upload something to Google Drive, that will be assigned a if it is more than 25 MB, it will be assigned a HTTPS link. All the YouTube videos will be having HTTPS link, right? So likewise, object storage data will be stored object by object. And every object is going to have a HTTPS link. So social networking websites, mostly the, the most of the data which social networking websites they're having, that is unstructured data. Unstructured data means the data size could be one KB, data size could be five DB, right? Data could be there in different, different formats. First data is, let's suppose your email. Second is, let's suppose your uh, Excel file. Third is your MP4, MP3, right? So different, different type of data we are having that is known as unstructured data, right? So object storage is always for storing unstructured data, right? Data size could be one KB. Data size would be 5 TB. So next question comes is that our virtual machines will be using which storage? They will be using SSD or HDD or magnetic. So that totally depends upon storage properties. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about storage properties that using which storage properties, what Amazon is offering you. Amazon is offering you different, different type of volumes that offering you uh, seven type of volumes, right? based on the application requirement. That means what all IOPS are required in an application, what throughput is required in an application. You can select different, different type of volume types. In the next lecture, we will be talking about volume types, right?